reduce operational costs. Madam Speaker, with controlled movement of population and the development and demands for social distancing, agricultural production, transport, and manufacturing outputs have been adversely affected. Post-harvest transport and manufacturing losses are now a reality. This is very devastating for youth agribusiness, most of which predominantly operate at low volumes due to resource constraints. Madam Speaker, in some, in some ways, e-extensions should, should come in handy where where county government should move in, in swiftly to continue supporting organized youth, organized youth procedure groups. At, at the same time, e-marketing using specifically designed digital apps or social media platforms should further help, should further help them while, slowing, while slowly catalyzing change within, this, within the greater smallerhold farming community with the main objective of connecting youth procedures and agro inputs suppliers to end consumer and exchanging market intelligence. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> the only comment I have registered is from Senator Wambua. Senator Wambua, please come in. I hear he's standing outside there in the extended, uh, he was in the extended chamber. Senator Wambua, yes. He's here. He's here. Yeah. Se yeah. Senator Wambua, yes. Yeah, Billy. Yeah, Billy. Uh, I thank you, Madam uh, Speaker, for uh, this opportunity. Madam Speaker, it must be noted that uh, the distance that some of us have to cover come and make a contribution here is uh, it's a long distance. Uh, so, Madam Speaker, I wanted to comment on the second statement by Senator Satambito. Touching on the establishment of uh, agribusinesses, especially focusing on the youth. Madam Speaker, in support of that statement, I want to say that this statement should actually look at youth empowerment in general beyond the COVID-19 situation. I say this, Madam Speaker, because truth be said, the rate of unemployment among the youth in this country is a ticking bomb. I do appreciate, Madam Speaker, that the government has come up with a program and a, a fund created by the President uh, to engage young people, especially in urban centers in the, the counties, in uh, the Kazi Mtani initiative. But I'm going that is just an initiative that will take six months, where the youth will be um, uh, engaged for 11 days in a month. But I'm I would want to urge this Senate and the leadership of this country to look beyond these stopgap measures in engaging our youth. And the statement by Senator Mbito is very timely. In that, Madam Speaker, it opens a national conversation as to what we actually need to do to, to give effect to our statements to the youth that they are tomorrow's leaders. That statement of Sika has become so vague that nobody takes it in, uh, uh, seriously anymore. But as speaker, in support of this uh, statement, I would want to urge that beyond COVID-19, even as we discuss allocations to, to counties, that a serious permanent fund <clears throat> be created to enable our youth be involved in agribusinesses and beyond agribusinesses, initiatives that would create jobs for themselves and create opportunities for them to come together and be engaged meaningfully. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, we are sitting on a time bomb. I thank you, Madam Speaker, and I support. Uh, thank you, Senator. The next statement is from Senator Alice Milgo.
What? Senator Alice Milgo. Woo, I was speaking. So then, my majority of merit does. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I rise past the understanding of the 471 to make a statement on an issue of general topic of concern, namely financial intermediaries as key in boosting food and nutrition security. Madam Speaker, as you are aware, the COVID-19 pandemic is a health and human right crisis that has caused food and nutrition insecurity to millions of people globally. Kenya included and measures to mitigate the pandemic are already affecting global food systems. Further restrictions and lockdowns are, for example, slowing harvest in some parts of the world, leaving millions of seasonal workers without livelihoods, as well as constraining transport of food to markets. Madam Speaker, actors in all parts of the food system are, affecting, are affected by this pandemic and the deep global economic shocks caused by COVID-19 will impact the cash flow and financial liquidity of producers, small and medium agribusinesses, to financial institutions due to inhibited production capacity, limited market access, loss of remittances, lack of employment and unexpected medical costs. Madam Speaker, as countries continue to roll out sizable relief and stimulus packages, the needs of food system actors deserve attention to ensure food security post-COVID-19. In response to this, the Microenterprise Support Programs Trust, a development organization mandated to support the growth and a development of smallholder farmers, farmers' cooperatives, small and medium enterprises for improved business competitiveness and for the reduction in Kenya has embarked on building resilience of the smallholder farmers and financial intermediaries to respond, recover, and thrive past the coronavirus crisis. Madam Speaker, it is therefore of paramount importance that financial institutions and partners restructure loans for farmers to ease their struggles amidst the devastating impact of COVID-19, according to directives by the national government in respect to mar moratorium and extension of loan tenors. Madam Speaker, over half of the world's population who are now living in urban areas depend on food markets, sources of affordable food. However, such markets have been associated with major outbreaks of diseases such as cholera, severe acute respiratory syndrome, avian flu, influenza, influenza, and the corona uh, virus. This raises alarm about emerging food safety concerns within the food production system. What markets are marketplaces that sell affordable, locally produced fresh foods, which include produce like meat, fish, and eggs, and what markets are there for a major component in the informal market sector? These markets are essential for economic growth and livelihood, so millions or people, especially in rural areas, which include small older farming households, small traders, vendors, and consumers. These markets are also popular tourist destinations as they become attributed to regions' uh, cultural presence. Madam Speaker, I would therefore urge the Micro Enterprise Support Programs Trust to work in partnership with the county governments to ensure proper management of world markets by ensuring that enabling policies and legislations to support the enactment of food safety and management of which markets are put in place. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I don't know if I'll go to my next statement or later. No, the next one is completely <laughs> okay. different. Uh, Senator Mbogo, George Ochilayako. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to support this statement. Madam Speaker, many people think that uh, unemployment can only be solved when uh, you get employed in urban, in urban areas or uh, to institutions. The biggest solution to unemployment is to interest young people, women, and men in food production, which is agriculture. And in order to do so, 
agriculture must be supported at all times, and more importantly, uh, debt that is associated with agriculture, and particularly debt that has been aggravated by COVID, needs to be addressed. But what government needs to do all the time is to ensure that market, markets are available. And market is about money. Kenyans uh, in this uh, COVID era or COVID period are unable to purchase food. So there are many places where we have food, but nobody has money to buy it. We have a lot of fish in Migori County, Mihuru Bay, Sori Bay, Karungu Bay. We have a lot of fish in Nyanza, but we do not have people who are able to buy it. So I want to ask government to other than engaging, uh, or besides engaging the financial institution regarding debt forgiveness, should avail money to Mashinani so that our people are able to support agriculture as uh, purchasers of food items. So it's important to encourage young people to farm, to grow food, but it's also more important to give the consumers of the produce money so that they can continue uh, purchasing uh, food wherever they are. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, uh, Senator Ketrut Musurube. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to support this statement by Senator Dr. Milgo. And uh, Dr. Milgo has brought a very important uh, uh, statement on the floor of this house that deals with food security. And uh, honestly, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, the issue of food security is an issue that uh, we should be concerned about each and every time, with or without COVID. And I remember that uh, even internationally, uh, uh, Kenya is among the countries that uh, signed and ratified the Maputo Declaration that affirmed that 10% of the national revenue will actually go to agriculture. So there's need for us as a country to ensure that we are supporting agriculture, we are supporting our farmers, and even when you are supporting our farmers, Honorable Speaker, county governments need to take the lead. They need to ensure that uh, yes, they are supporting farmers, and they're also helping farmers get an exit uh, for their products, because uh, there's some parts of this world, uh, there are some parts of this country where you find farmers have a lot of uh, money, a lot of food, but they do not know where to take their food. So uh, sometimes uh, they even, give, some farmers even give, uh, you know, avocados to cows because they don't know where to take. So there's need to have even an exit for the, this food. I also want to say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, when it comes to the urban population, actually uh, the demand for food is met by uh, the farmers in uh, Mashinani. So there's need uh, for them to be supported and encouraged in their endeavor because uh, they form a significant uh, uh, part of uh, people in this economy, th in this country. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for uh, the time I support this statement. Senator Moses Matangula. Madam Speaker, Dr. Milgo's statement is so important, Madam Speaker. This country over 70% of people work in the agricultural sector. Our economy is supposed to be agricultural based. But every time farmers produce enough produce, they suffer even more. No markets, no communication, very difficult circumstances, very expensive inputs. Madam Speaker, this country has fallen into the trap set by Western governments of leaving everything to the so-called market forces. When in their own countries, they subsidize farmers at every twist and turn. It's important, Madam Speaker, that the government takes serious steps to support farmers at every level, land preparation, inputs, markets, value addition, and so on and so forth, Madam Speaker. Lastly, since the matter concerns uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, Madam Speaker, allow me to send uh, very sincere condolences to two distinguished citizens of my county. Yesterday, we buried the first medical doctor to die of COVID-19, Dr. Doreen Lugalik, in Tongaren subcount of Bungoma. And last night, we lost one of the most distinguished professors in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Nairobi, Professor Maurice Kizito Mangoli, 
who again succumbed to COVID-19. This disease is real. It is killing people. And we need serious engagement and serious measures, Madam Speaker, to protect people. If people at the level of doctors and professors are exposed and can succumb, you can imagine the status of the ordinary person. Madam Speaker, thank you. Thank you. The last contributor to this statement is Senator, Senator Mary Yane. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for also giving me a chance to add my voice to this very important statement by uh, Senator Milko. It is a very, very important uh, uh, statement. Madam Speaker, I wish we could also support the youth in our rural areas to be able also to invest in food security. I would also wish that uh, our county governments, because agriculture is now uh, a default function, our county government should also invest in supporting small farmers and also our youth even to invest in agriculture. We need to encourage the uh, small medium uh, investors to be able to boost um, agricultural uh, systems so that we don't lack food. Madam Speaker, at this particular time, when we have all our students at home and all our children at home, they need three meals a day. And if a family does not have food to give this to these uh, children at home, then we shall have a crisis even in our counties. So Madam Speaker, it's, hard, it's high time that government, both national and county, should support agricultural systems through financial support and also through uh, giving uh, inputs to our farmers. Subsidies like fertilizers, seeds, and even pesticides and herbicides should come on time so that our agricultural, um, our farmers in the agriculture, uh, agriculture um, sector should be able to produce. So I support this uh, very important statement and I will also want to encourage the committee to go further and look at even how we can give money to our youth and especially at this time when they are free at home, most of them, to be, uh, to be able to even um, buy these foods from the basket, uh, food, uh, production basket areas and, and, and take them to the markets so that they can be able to uh, get some little money in their pockets. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. The next statement is from Senator Gertrude Musurure. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I rise person to standing order number 47-1 to make a statement of general topic, uh, topical interest concerning the overwhelming escalation in incidents of violation of children's rights. Honorable Speaker, Children have specific rights, as outlined in Article 53 of the Constitution, which are being flouted on a daily basis. Child abuse is manifested in various forms, ranging from physical, mental, and emotional abuse, climaxing into abandonment and murder. Article 53D of the Constitution says that every child has a right to be protected from abuse, neglect, harmful cultural practices, of all forms uh, in human treatment and punishment and hazardous uh, of exploitative labor. Uh, this right is uh, infringed from evidence of children being subjected to rape by their own caretakers, such as biological and safe fathers, uncles, teachers, chiefs, religious leaders, and uh, 
other such men of repute and honor. Honorable Speaker, to highlight a few cases, not long ago, an American couple, Gregory Doe and his wife, Mary Rose, were accused of abusing children under their care in Beaumont County. Uh, Gregory, 61, admitted during a federal court uh, hearing in the U.S. to having committed the crimes between 2013 and uh, 2017 in Kenya. Apart from this, there's also the numerous cases of child abductions that have been going on for a while now, with several children being reported as missing, only to be found later having been abandoned in far-flung places. One of the cases is that of 15-year-old Linda Moore Musimi, who was abducted uh, when she was on her way to the shop from their house in Ongata Rongai. She was found abandoned in Mavoko four days later, uh, despite there being movement restrictions in places. Honorable Speaker, there have, been, there have also been reports on the mainstream media regarding the murders of two children, Henry Jackton and Alvin Mudeu in Kitangela. Uh, the two were abducted while they were playing outside their houses within an estate. After three months, the bodies of the two children were found in a car that was parked at a police station in Athi River. Honorable Speaker, the efforts of the parents of the, these two children to get the truth about the mystery surrounding their deaths have been futile as their concerns have not been addressed and no one from the security team has reached out to them. I can only imagine the anguish those parents are going through as they think of the heinous acts that uh, was done to their innocent children. Further, further to the above cases, Honorable Speaker, around the ma uh, Around last month, a couple from Kiambu was seen in the mainstream media, both print and electronic, uh, stating that they were looking for well-wishers to take their two children. The couple premised their action on the unbearable economic effects of COVID-19. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Article 53E of the Constitution states clearly that every child has a right to parental care and protection. It is unfortunate that the society is slowly uh, losing its sense of social responsibility and moral, fa uh, moral fabric on uh, children's issues. No amount of excuse is acceptable for being irresponsible. COVID-19 is no justification for parents to abdicate their roles. As a country, we should spare ourselves God's wrath that may be brought about by failing to appreciate the gifts that he gives mankind. That is the gift of children who become an invaluable inheritance. Honorable Speaker, again, most recently, a woman murdered her four children in Naivasha and blamed her actions on evil spirits within her. The four were interred at Kinagop. May the souls of these four innocent children whose lives were cut short by none other than their own mother rest in peace. Harmful cultural practices and other forms of violence on children should not be condoned in any way. Perpetrators of such heinous acts ought to be brought to book in order to serve as a warning to people who may not care about respecting the rights of children. Children are our future generation, and we must ensure they are protected, nurtured, and raised in a manner that guarantees a secure future. Mr. Speaker, sir, oh, sorry, Honorable, Spe Honorable Speaker, there is also the, the plight of children who are sexually abused by their caregivers, relatives, and people known to them or otherwise. Such children go through a lot of psychological trauma and mental anguish. They rarely find uh, people who understand them with a view to helping them overcome the trauma. Children who have been abandoned by their parents too go through mental anguish. Children who are, are perpetually battered by their caregivers eventually end up suffering from low self-esteem. Such children rarely find a fully fledged sustainable recourse that would help them get back to normal lives and uh, to live objectively. Most of these children are rushed away from uh, the society and their families to rescue centers. Honorable Speaker, the root cause of child abuse, neglect, and violation of children's rights may effectively be addressed from the family or societal level. 
every human being is a social being and uh, socialization begins from the family level. The ills in families and society need to be addressed to ensure that the environment is conducive for child uh, nurturing, growth and development. Children need to be encouraged to frequently engage in open communication with all significant people in their lives. Some children who fall victims to abuse could probably be introverts and those who keep too much information to themselves. Moreover, perpetrators of child abuse probably take advantage of their dominance in their victims' lives. Honorable Speaker, Kenya is among the member states that sign, signed and ratified the UN, United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. The convention has 54 articles that cover all aspects of a child's life and sets out the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights that all children world over are entitled to. These rights are enshrined in Article 53, 1A to F, and uh, 53, 2, of the Constitution of Kenya. To this end, Honorable Speaker, I would like to appeal to you to consider tasking the Committee on National Security, Defense, and Foreign Relations to look into matters such as the abductions or kidnappings that I have outlined above with a view to ensuring that the perpetrators of such heinous acts are brought to book and that justice is served especially to the two families whose children's bodies were found in an accident wrecked car parked at at the river uh, police station i conclude honorable speaker by calling upon all the relevant organs in the society to take up the responsibility of ensuring protection of children's rights children are a gift from god and must be appreciated groomed and nurtured for generational prosperity. I further call upon all Kenyans to endeavor to defend Article 53 of the Constitution as well as the Children's Act, CAP 586 of the Laws of Kenya, which spell out the rights of the child. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Senator. You have taken the full 10 minutes of the statement. Uh, I will allow two minutes to Senator Logorio Betoni Lawera. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam, Madam Speaker. Uh, before I comment on the statement on the abuse of children, I would like to say something small about the statement from uh, Senator, Milsen, uh, sorry, <laughs> Senator Alice Milgo on the fi financial interventions for food and nutrition security. Madam Speaker, we have an organization called Agricultural Finance Corporation, so her statement will not be operating in a vacuum. And we expect that AFC as an organization should take up the suggestions from Senator uh, Milgo to ensure that some of those interventions are going down to the counties, agriculture being a devolved, a devolved function. So it's not in a vacuum, there's a structure through which her interventions can be implemented. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank uh, Senator Musuruve um, on her statement on the abuse of children. Madam Speaker, children are such innocent souls and the role given to adults it's so sacred from God is to take care of children. So for anyone who is abusing children, kidnapping them, raping them, killing them, is somebody who has a mental illness. And this uh, begs the question why the mental health bill is taking some time in the National Assembly. They should clear with that bill so that it comes out here as law and helps us deal with the many mental issues in our society. A human being, an adult who attacks a child, is sick and is transferring that mental illness to children by abusing them. We have heard from Senator Musuruve that these children transfer that mental illness to others. So then the cycle continues. A hurt person hurts people. So let us make sure that we, are, we adhere to the law and protect children as much as possible so that we reduce the number of... Uh, thank you, Senator Faria. Two minutes. Uh, 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 thank you, Madam Speaker. 
uh, I got distracted by Senator Susan and Senator Wambu. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, I, I wish to thank uh, Senator uh, Musuruve for, for this statement. Madam Speaker, I think our society has learned to, you know, take children to school and the teachers to take care of them. And now, we don't know how to handle children who are at home and <laughs> they have nothing absolutely to do and they are just the way children are. At least if you had, if you, you come from my county, they can play outside. There's space to play outside. In places like in Nairobi or in the big city, even that is not there. So now it is just uh, people feel that, uh, I mean, they, they, they f the children feel so, uh, you know, crumpled up in a small room. And in terms of even the abuses she was talking about, uh, you know, parents abusing and all that, a, a, a child who has been, a, a girl who has been sexually abused, Madam Speaker, will remain depressed for the rest of her life until she either g gets, you know, psychological support so that she can get over that trauma in her life. Madam Speaker, even as she grows up as an adult, Madam Speaker, that is an impact that will continue. Before I finish my, my two minutes, I wish to also thank Senator Milgo for state, her statement. Because even the, it's not only the farmers who are suffering at this point, even the, 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 the livestock keepers are also suffering because there is no market for their, their produce, Madam Speaker. So as we, we extend that uh, statement, let us also extend it to livestock. And I also wish to send my condolences to Senator Wetangula's uh, uh, doctor. She was practicing in, in, Wajia, in, in Nairobi South Hospital and known to most of the community Done. Senator Nyamunga, two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity just to support the statement which has uh, been uh, brought forward by Senator Musuruve. Madam Speaker, if you were to talk about the children and the suffering that our children have gone through in the recent past, and it's not only in the recent past, this has been something which has been on for a very long time. It pains all of us. That, and, but what pains me most is the fact that two children were killed from wherever they were and then put in a motor vehicle in the police station. And up to now, nothing can, be, nothing can be shown as to the origin and whatever happened. It really makes me sad, Madam Speaker. And secondly, it is also important to know that for such things to happen in a nation or in a country like ours, there must be a sick society. So even before we solve the problem of child defilement, we should solve the problem of psychosocial problems that we, say, that we face in this country. If we try to solve the problem of defilement without treating the society as a whole, it means that we'll be cutting the tree from, from up and not from the bottom. So, Madam Speaker, it is critical. We cannot have enough prisons to arrest these people all the time we hear cases, but we must solve the problem, which is the, the social problem that we face, that mothers face, there are so many mothers who are children. They themselves are children and they have children. We must solve this problem. And it's unfortunate that even a single woman had to lose three children, in not really losing in the fact that they died. But can you imagine your own son impregnating two of your daughters? How do you live with that? Where do you take it? Can that be ever rubbed, whatever we do? So we have a problem, Madam Speaker, and we should find a proper and a lasting solution to all the things that we read and the things that we see in our society. I support this, the, the statement, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator Langat, Christopher, two minutes. Thank you. I, I thought you all must be becoming gender insensitive because you've given ladies, but thank, thank you have given me. <laughs> in fact, that is how I wanted to spend it. Madam, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I want to thank you so much for having given me this opportunity. I want to be specific on children that always become victims of circumstances. I think the government itself is one of the agents of children's abuse in this country. I want, I remind, I want to remind you, Madam Speaker, that even during eviction in, in Kariobangi, eviction in Mao Forest, children are not taken care of by the government. They make them suffer because of, uh, they make them suffer because of their parents. So I tend to think that Whenever there are even eviction, Madam Speaker, the government should in advance consider 
the livelihood and the welfare of the children. So I want to say that govern government should take lead in protecting children, particularly in such circumstances. I want to add by saying, Madam Speaker, that uh, the way we bring up our children at the moment determine what they will become in future. When we subject them to so much suffering currently, we are actually, we are actually investing in, in them bitterness in future. So the way we treat our children is what we expect them to become in future. So I want to say that the government should be very serious on this matter. It should take a lead in protecting our children. Even that case that Madam Musurve was talking about in, in Bomet, we informed the government in advance about what was going on. But they didn't take it seriously until the man went back to America, only to be convicted in America, yet nothing could happen here in Kenya. The government should take lead in protecting our children. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, extended Chamber, Senator Kabaka, please move very fast while Senator Ongeri uh, is the last one in the room. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to weigh in on a very important topic. Children are a heritage to society. And the way we bring up our children will determine how that nation is going to move forward. Train the child the way he should go so that in the latter days he may never forget what you have trained that child to be. I think if you read in Proverbs 22 verse 6, it clearly says so, train the child. What is happening today, there's so much social impact that children are unable to absorb this social impact. Families are torn into pieces because of COVID-19, the socioeconomic disaster that we are witnessing in this country. Therefore, everybody is left on his or on, on our own. It becomes very difficult. People are committing suicide. Even the people who are normal people are committing suicide because of the inability to cope with the economic burden and the social burden that has been placed upon them in society. And therefore, these abuses we are seeing is in fact a symptom of a malady that may in fact escalate and extend to a level where if it's not taken care of at this stage, we may see a lot of different difficulties arising because we have failed to take stock of this situation in good time. My suggestion would be children belong both the county governments and also the national government. But the national government has a responsibility also of ensuring how their future populations are going to grow. When you see uh, abuses occurring, young people who have no, they will, they, will, they will just follow if they are directed. And particularly, if they are, if they are Uh, thank you, Senator. I don't see Senator Kabaka. He will, uh, he will contribute through the next statement, which is from Senator Susan Kiko of Nakuru. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Pursuant to Standing Order 47-1, I rise to make a statement on an issue of general topical concern, namely the eviction of residents of Mariashoni Ward in Molo constituency, Nakuru County, by the Kenya Forest Services and the Kenya Wildlife Service. Uh, Madam Speaker, Mao Forest in Kenya is one of the most important water catchment areas in the Rift Valley in Western Kenya. The forest is the source of at least 12 rivers that feed into three lakes. Lake Victoria, the world's second largest freshwater lake, as well as Lake Nakuru, and Lake Naivasha, which support millions of human and wildlife in Kenya and beyond. Madam Speaker, while forest conservation goals are laudable, the way Kenya Forest Services is carrying out the evictions, while we are in the midst of fighting the COVID-19 global pandemic, raises serious concerns on the inhumane treatment and the use of excessive force to evict the communities that authorities say have encroached the forest land. 
Uh, Madam Speaker, many families have been left out in the cold and the rain because they have, been, they have nowhere to go. I visited that area two days ago and was uh, horrified actually to walk away and leave most of those families out in the cold as I left uh, for the evening and they had nowhere to go. And on top of that, they have nothing to eat uh, given the circumstances and the conditions that have been going on since uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Their homes have been totally destroyed. Most of them have been burned to the ground and others just uh, completely, even the plants and uh, the, the, the crop that is in, on the land been destroyed. Uh, so th what is going on is actually doing more harm than good. As much as we are here and we stand and support conservation, uh, what is happening is completely inhuman against their human rights. And uh, these families are actually being left susceptible, susceptible to diseases such as COVID-19, cholera, and pneumonia. We saw so many small children out there in the rain and uh, they had nothing but the clothes on their back. Out of the four sublocations in Marioshoni Ward, Madam Speaker, two have been completely affected in the following areas. Segut, Kaplop, Block 10, Kapsinedet, 